<laughs> I hate that feeling. <laughs> There's something about a promise, isn't there? That man made a promise to some first graders that he would see to it that they would be able to get a college education. He made a promise to them that changed the way they went to school, that changed the way they studied, that changed the way they even spent their weekends. It changed everything. A promise to those kids changed everything. Promises are powerful things. And we, as human beings, have given, been given the most powerful promise of all, which I want us to celebrate together today. But before we get there, I want to talk about another promise. And uh, that's a promise that uh, we read about in Scripture through um, uh, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah had been married for a long time, and Abraham and Sarah had a promise from God. And the promise was that one day they would have, what? A child, have a son. And the years rolled by and rolled by, no son, no child. And, and in the course of that, they kept hanging on to the promise, but did they always remain faithful? It depends on how you look at it. That's how I always thought. I always thought they were not very faithful. In fact, here, Paul says, um, can you back it up for me once? My monitor's not da on down here, so. Um, and hope against hope, he believes so that he might become a father of many nations according to that which had been spoken. So shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, now as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next slide. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. So either Paul misunderstood history, or we're reading it wrong. Because when I read the story, I see Abraham and Sarah saying, okay, maybe what we need to do is help God out a little bit, right? Right? So here's Hagar, my maidservant. Why don't you sleep with her and have a child with her, and then we will have the promised child. How'd that work? Not well. And then at one point in Scripture, we see Abraham saying, well, maybe it's going to be my servant. He's the closest one to me. He'll get everything I have. He's the one. But he wasn't the one. The point of Abraham's story is this. We are just like him. The point of the story of Abraham is that when God gives us a promise as human beings, we then set apart uh, about to do everything we can do to accomplish the promise for God. Okay, so God gives us a promise and then it's like, okay, God, well, so what am I supposed to do here to accomplish this promise? And we do the same thing that Abraham did and try and figure it out and try and sort it out and trying to do what we're supposed to do. And all the time, God is trying to bring us to the point, just like he did with Abraham, where we finally recognize that the promise that God has given to us is so big that there is nothing we can do except allow him to fulfill it. When Abraham and Sarah are 100 years old and they haven't had a child yet, I haven't reached that age yet, but I'm definitely at midlife, and I sure don't want another kid, but you know, I just don't think it's going to happen. It's easy for us to begin trying to do it ourselves. Yesterday on the radio, I heard a story about some people in New Mexico, and please know that by me saying this, I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm just pointing out this story was on the radio of people in New Mexico who walk clear across the state to go to, they walk like hundreds of miles across the state to go to this chapel, where there in the chapel, they have dirt, a dirt floor that is holy, and they can be blessed then if they, have, if they walk there and get this dirt. And I'm like, really? There's something about us as human beings that just think there's something we've got to do to get the blessing of God. And the story of Abraham and Sarah and the story to us is that God alone is capable 
of fulfilling the promise. The promise to us, next slide, is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Where Paul says, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Every promise in the word of God is fulfilled, not by Carrie Fry. It's not, it's not accomplished by me going to church every week. It's not accomplished by me returning my tithes and offerings. It's not accomplished by, by me wearing a tie. It's not accomplished by any of these other means. The only way that I am made right with God, the only way that I'm forgiven, the only way that all of the promises of God are fulfilled in me is through the act of Jesus Christ. And that's why this time of year we are reminded as Christians in a very specific way that Jesus Christ lived and died and rose again. And we celebrate that because without that, the promise is unfulfilled. Next slide. So what happens when Jesus comes and fulfills us? What does that bring to us? If we today place our faith in Jesus Christ, here are some of the things that we receive. We receive forgiveness of sin. Is that convenient for you? Two of you think that that's a good thing. Yeah. Amen. Obviously, your past wasn't as sordid as mine, but, you know, the reality of the fact is, the reality of the fact is, I was reading just this week, that some of the sins that are not so obvious are worse. That's a scary thought. Because we don't even recognize it, we don't even see it. Those sins are forgiven in Christ. We receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus accomplished for us. We receive eternal life, not here in the present world, but in a perfect world. That sounds pretty good. We receive a clear conscience before God. How many people have I talked to who have prayed over and over and over again for forgiveness and they say, I still feel guilty? Maybe you felt that way. We receive a, pa a peace that passes understanding. We receive a right relationship with God. We receive security, purpose, and this is a short list. I could go on and on, okay? But my point to you today is every one of us here today and every human being who's ever lived on this planet has been given a fulfilled promise in Jesus Christ. God said that when Adam and Eve sinned, they, that he would bring the offspring of the woman into the world who would change everything for us, who would get us back right with him. Jesus is his name. Today we're going to celebrate and receive Christ anew through what's called a communion service. It's simple. It's eating a piece of bread and drinking a little cup of juice. But in that act, in that act, you are saying today, in that act, you are saying today that you believe the promise and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay? It's going to be a little bit different than how we normally do it, but here's how it's going to go. When I finish talking, Dolores is going to have a, a prayer of blessing over the emblems. The musicians are going to come up and lead us in a congregational song. The deacons will then come up and get the emblems and pass them out. And, uh, but before we eat the emblems um, and drink the juice... All I'm saying is don't get ahead of me, okay? Don't get ahead of me because there's a way I want to do it a little different today, okay? So Dolores is going to pray for us as we um, partake in these emblems. At this time, I cannot offer a prayer without kneeling before my Lord and Savior. If you would like to join me and kneel where you are, Please do so. O Lamb of God, as we sang and saw the Lamb up on the screen, my heart was broken. And I was so grateful that we didn't have to slay a Lamb to get forgiveness that you made that sacrifice. That you in the Garden of Eden, not in the Garden, in the Garden of Gethsemane, 
surrendered all to your Father. You said, not my will, but your will be done. And Lord, that's what you're asking of us. So I want to ask a blessing upon these emblems. But as we partake of them, Lord, it is with a surrendered heart that we take them and we surrender totally all to you. And I know that we try to do that, and then you peel back the layers and there's more hidden there. But today, we just want to surrender all that we know. And we know we'll do it again and again and again in our lives. But thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the promise that Carrie's been talking about. For all the benefits that we receive, the forgiveness of sin, the peace, the joy, the security. And Lord, help us. Help us not to try to do your work, but to accept with love what you've done for us. Thank you. Amen.